Hi, I'm uh, Bradley Sumrall, and I'm here with uh, New Orleans artist John Isaiah Walton. Uh, we're here to talk today about his piece, Three Hours of Rain, in the Owen and Knight live auction this year. Uh, thank you for being with me today, John. Oh, yeah, you know. um, so a little background about John uh, Isaiah Walton. We, uh, we worked together uh, last year uh, when we hosted, Ogden hosted an exhibition of Level Artist Collective. Um, and uh, John's uh, exhibition was the first gallery that you walked into that show and really set the tone for the exhibition. Very successful, we were really proud uh, to have his work in the museum finally. Uh, he was born in 1985 in New Orleans and he still lives and works uh, in New Orleans. Uh, graduate of St. Augustine High School and uh, Sarah T, oh, no, you went to St. Aug and you graduated from Reed, Sarah T. Reed High School. Um, and uh, <laughs> also attended Delgado here in New Orleans. He's been a member of the Second Story Gallery, uh, The Front, and was a founding, were you a founding member or just a member of the Level Artist Collective? Yeah, well, I was a member of Second Story and Level, so you know, yeah. I'll be finding stuff, you know. Uh, and he's got work in the permanent collection of the New Orleans Museum of Art here in New Orleans, and hopefully one day soon, the Ogden Museum of Southern Art uh, as well. Um, so this is John's first time uh, in the live auction at the Ogden. It's a very, very exciting moment, and I'm sure somebody's gonna get a, a great piece for their collection, or our collection, by the way. Um, and, uh, uh, I'm going to share that piece with you, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. So let me pull that up. All right. Three Hours of Rain by John Isaiah Walton. Um, so, John, this is an oil on canvas. It's a, a diptych, 48 by 72. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about this piece. Well, painting came from... Uh, that one Saturday um, in August, maybe like three or four years ago. Uh, remember that white linen night that got like rained out? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah that's, so this is what this is based on that that evening. So 2017. Yeah, and uh, my painting, uh, my actually my studio was in the, in the Seven Ward and right next to that like Circle Food store. And mm -hmm. I, uh, one of my homeboys um, who was around the spot, Ricardo, man, he, Ricardo, like, was there at the studio when it was, like, flooded out. So he actually, mm -hmm. like, saved my paintings by putting them up. And then I was looking at, like, Facebook, and I was looking at, like, the live videos or whatever um, of, like, what's going on with the flooding. And, like, my studio was, like, right down the street, like, from where it was, like, mm -hmm. happening. And uh, they always had, like, these sewage and waterboard guys. Um, down the street from my, my spot, like just always out there, you know, like, you know, chilling, <laughs> you know, with the cones around it, with the little like truck or whatever, you know, not fixing really anything. So, you know, and the water pump's not working at night, that day, like kind of, you know, help this piece become, you know, reality, so, you know. Well, I remember that well, and I, I remember how heartbreaking it was for Circle Food, and I think that was um, one of the, <laughs> the nail in the coffin for those owners, uh, the, the original owners of Circle Food. Mm -hmm. And for those of you that are not from New Orleans, Circle Food is um, a very historic great, uh, grocery store. Um, it was there when the streetcar used to run through the middle of that store. And it's one of the oldest black uh, groceries in America. Um, it suffered greatly uh, during, well, a few times when they put in the interstate uh, kind of ruined the ambiance of the place and destroyed that shop, black shopping district in New Orleans. Um, and then when Katrina hit, it was often on the news with bodies floating in the water in front of it. Um, a really, really tragic event. Um, and it was really tough on that building. And it took years uh, to reopen Circle Food. And then um, just a, a, like like John said, just um, uh, eight to 10 hours of rain one afternoon, not even a hurricane, and it flooded two Katrina levels in that neighborhood again uh, because of the uh, kind of de decaying infrastructure we have with our pumping system uh, here in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So is that circle, is it, what's in the background in this piece? So uh, this painting um, is like the start of the using like video game 
um, layouts or like backgrounds mm. and stuff. Um, because paintings now, I mean, they started to do that more and more now, but when I first did this, you know, it was just like an idea of like what media has not, that has not been absorbed into like um, the creation of, you know, art uh, or, you know, just like that whole aesthetic of something new, I guess, you know, um, when it comes to creating a, a body of work or creating an idea. And, you know, it has, it's like a definite pop culture reference. If you ever went to like a Pizza Hut back in the early 90s, I know they had like a Mario Brothers little, you know, a uh, little arcade thing you can like play. So um, with the background, it's like, I wanted to play with like the Cylinder Waterboard, uh, um, you know, collecting money. That's where you get the coins when you get out the castle. And ah. the entrance on the other side. That's like something you did in Mario when you play the game. And, uh, you know, I got the um, yin and yang aspects of the, you know, two gentlemen in the water. You know, one guy is on his little um, pad looking at how dangerous the levels are. Well, the other worker is like, you know, like relaxed, chill, you know, on his iPhone talking about whatever, you know. So it's like a, um, it's like the duality of like the uh, ideas of New Orleans and how we be taking stuff serious, but you know, we, you know, we just try to get by and like, you know, you know, waiting for the next like little like chill moment, you know, like a Mardi Gras, or, like any big party, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow, I never would see. I, I, I'm of that generation that I quit playing video games after Donkey Kong on the Atari set, you know, so uh, I, I, I lost that reference, but now I, it makes so much sense. Uh, <laughs> um, so your work uh, often has these hidden, hidden meanings, these hidden symbols. You're one of the code makers in the tradition of Basquiat and this kind of social uh, ur social commentary through ur urban expressionism and neo-expressionism uh, with your mark making. Uh, so how does this fit into your the series that it situates itself in? And how does this painting fit into the larger body of your work? Well, I'm gonna try to keep it brief, uh, the explanation, because mm -hmm. it can get kind of um, complicated. So I did a body work based on New Orleans called Humidity. Mm -hmm. so great, probably great show. Oh, thank you. And uh, you can probably say it's a part of that series, but um, this is like one of the first few paintings I did with like a back, a black background. And I call those the black paintings because you can, you know, see little black stuff, uh, black, um, um, like parts of like the paintings, you know, like mm -hmm. in the castle, you see like the little black shadows. That's actually the black background, you know, I painted it uh, with, with that first, that second layer of black paint. So, um, so a lot of these, you know, paintings that you see black in is just like the background, the, the underpainting, you know. Um, so that's what I call the black paintings. And this is like probably like the third one or second one I did of a long list of black paintings. You know, most of the stuff I had the Ogden last year was like black paintings and stuff like Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, was there a symbolic meaning behind that or was this for solely a formal decision with that black background? Uh, well, I guess it would just be looking at like Cy Twombly and like uh, Francis mm -hmm. Quan, they had like these black backgrounds and stuff. So um, decided to take somebody else's stuff and, you know, recycle like how people do anyway when they create right. stuff. I decided to recycle it, you know, in this type of way. Well, the, I saw humidity at uh, the Oro Keith Museum, uh, a solo exhibition in uh, Biloxi, Mississippi and was blown away. Uh, with your use of um, six flags and your commentary on, on on New Orleans culture, and these two pieces stood out. So we're 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 so blessed to be able to um, auction them this year to support uh, the museum during these difficult times. So, oh, yeah. um, anything else you'd like to add about this piece? This is just a little teaser for those collectors that might be interested and uh, in your work, or or just not even collectors, but people that are interested in your work, but. But any, anything else you'd like to say about um, Three Hours of Rain? Well, if you like that, you know, holler at me. We got more. <laughs> he does have more. He does have more. And, it, and he keeps creating more. I've never seen an artist that can work so fast. Or as one of his um, um, collective members told me, he'll talk about an idea for three weeks and then do the, and then execute the painting in three hours, you know? So a lot of thought goes behind this work, uh, but then they come together and coalesce very quickly and you can see the confidence uh, of that hand uh, in the work. Uh, so John Isaiah Walton, um, Three Hours of Rain, 